Truth and freedom are the relationship that you have with your father through Jesus. Nobody can take that from you. So you don't lose your freedom. It don't come in a constitution that a, a bunch of men wrote a couple hundred years ago. And people believe that's where I get my rights from. That's where I have the right to do. If, if that's what you believe, you don't have any rights, man. Truth and freedom are the relationship you have with your father through Jesus. Truth and freedom are the relationship we have with other members of God's true family. Truth and freedom are walking the narrow path that few are called to. Truth and freedom are being able to call on your father anytime and any place and know you will be helped. Truth and freedom are Jesus giving his life so our sins will be forgotten. See, that's real truth. That's real freedom. When Jesus says, look, all the things that you did, all of it, once you give it all to me, that don't matter anymore. See, that's freedom and that's truth and that's not what this world wants. Truth and freedom are getting God's hands after we've had a fall. Truth and freedom are what our father planted. Truth and freedom are knowing this world and life is temporary and what is to come is forever. Truth and freedom is everything that is Jesus. Jehovah Father has not ever, nor will he ever, allow these gifts to be censored. So let us not censor ourselves.
My friends, it's the denial of Jesus that will get you. It's the mockery of Jesus. It's the life of mocking God and what he gave us in Jesus. So if you want to spend your time debating people about UFOs, this, this, and that, or, or this, this truth, or you think you're, you found somebody, every truth comes from God. Now listen to what your, your father says. 1 Corinthians 2.10 says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. Notice he says by a Spirit. Now, his Spirit, where does his Spirit live? In us. In us. Look up John chapter 14, verses 23. His Spirit lives in us. Romans 8.14. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yes, the deep things of God. So if you want to know something important about life or you have a question, man, you don't go to the Internet. The first thing you do is pray. You tell Father, I have a question. I need to know something. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Let's read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You see, God sees everything. There's nothing that you've ever done that God does not know about. He knows your thoughts. This is why you can pray to your father and just talk to him in your mind. But once you give all of your life to, to Jesus Christ, you don't have a past. You don't have a history. Your slate is clean. There is nothing that your father cannot do. Nothing. There are no limitations on his power, and he gave all this power to his son, Jesus. Our father wants us to call out to him in the name of Jesus. Your father wants, in these times, I keep sounding the message. Our father wants you, his children, to pray to him because things are going to get worse. My wife and I went to the grocery store the past two days, and it was an eye-opening experience for me to be able to see the prices, just how bad it's gotten. I didn't get upset. I rejoiced because it's just as my father said, this is what's going to happen. This is watch it happen. Rejoice because we're getting near the end. God will take care of his own. He always has and he always will. Let's read. As I'm going to say it again to you, your father wants you to pray to him. We're told to pray. Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed a lot. Jesus would raise his head and pray to his father. Sometimes he got on his knees and prayed. Jesus wants us to pray. Your father wants us to seek his face, his love, and his protection. And how do you do this? Through prayer. Prayer. And what is prayer? It's just talking. That's all it is. It's talk with your Father and Jesus. And it should be something that you should want to do. What's more powerful than to talk to your Father and Jesus? Psalm 105.4 Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. When we pray, we keep ourselves close to our Father and Jesus. It's always reaffirming our love and our bond that we have with our mighty Father through Jesus. Self-censorship is when folks become too afraid to say the name Jesus. They stop praying, they give up, and they go along to get along. Self-censorship is when folks too, become too afraid to admit that Jesus is the only way. Even if they really believe it, they are in fear that they don't want to offend other folks. Or maybe other religions, they have their rights too. It's not what your father said, man. Your father didn't say there was many ways. He said, my son is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus said, nobody comes to the father but by me. He said, nobody else. It's just him. We must pray and keep praying. What a mighty and loving father we have and the glorious image he gave us in his beloved son, Jesus. Prayer is our words. Prayer is talking with our father and Jesus. Prayer is private. It's personal. And it's a deep way of staying close to what matters. And what matters is your Father and Jesus and nothing else. We're going to see really bad times come upon this earth. And your way to deal with all this is prayer and to ask for help. Ask for whatever that you need. And you do all this above the name that is above all names. The Father said the name that is above all names. That every knee will bow to. That everything in heaven and earth know that the name that is above all names. He doesn't have 20 names. He doesn't have secret names. His name is Jesus, and you do everything in Jesus' name because the Father said you do it in Jesus' name. I appreciate you all being here, and I appreciate you all watching. In the name of Jesus, amen.